actually do believe they're watching us. They are watching us and our petty little Cold War squabbles. Uh, I, um, I was tasked with, um, as you may um, recall, of course, the height of the Cold War was still very much happening in the 70s. Um, most of you have been, were around in the 70s. Probably you, not you were. Were you in the, yes? How old were you, sweetheart? Uh, so it's all your fault. She was born in 71, yes. It was all happening then. Um, I was actually given the task of, um, well, as you remember, there was a whole lot of residue left over from, uh, from that, the reds under the beds uh, situation. Um, and I was actually given the task of coaxing them out. Um, <laughs> which was rather difficult, actually, because most of them had been under there since the 1950s. Um, they were a little bit old and doddery and terribly cramped um, by the time I got to them. And I managed to coax them out with uh, offerings of grilled cheese sandwiches and glasses of warm milk. They were quite grateful. And I actually felt a little bit sorry for them when they finally emerged. They were all covered in dust bunnies and old tissues and lost socks. Um, <laughs> it was quite sad, really. I don't know what happened to them, but I did such a good job with that that... Uh, that uh, MI5 sent me off to um, the Soviet space program as an un undercover agent. Um, I had to be a, a mute Ukrainian poli uh, a rocket polisher. Um, uh, I had to be mute because my, my Russian was appalling. Um, and I had to try and, you know, see what they were really up to. Um, so I, I quietly went out about my business. Um, I just nodded at everything, um, just to in order to survive. Um, I, Unfortunately, uh, fell somewhat in love with a, a very tall, dark, and handsome cosmonaut named Yuri. Um, <laughs> and we flirted for a while. Um, and then finally, I guess he got up the courage to ask me out um, one day. And he said, in his deep, thick Russian accent, Meet me for lunch. <laughs> I was all giddy with excitement. And so I did. I met him for lunch. And I guess my suspicions should have been raised when he insisted that I, I put on a very bulky spacesuit and then he led me into an elevator. Um, uh, I thought he was just being kinky, so I went along with it. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, next thing I know, I'm blasting off into space with Yuri. Um, as it turns out, the Russians at that time were financing a highly illegal, top secret asteroid mining operation. And they had a, a, space, a, a space station that was orbiting around the dark side of the moon. Leaky old thing it was. It was a kind of a fly-in, fly-out sort of situation, <laughs> scenario. Um, and poor old Yuri, as it turned out, poor old Yuri was a little bit starved of female affection for the times that he was in the space station. And um, he decided that I would the be the ideal companion, probably because he didn't think I could call, talk back. I don't remember much about that time. I was trapped there for God knows how long in a kind of foggy haze of uh, vodka fumes and freeze-dried freeze dried, uh, uh, smoked herring. Um, anyway, uh, I, one day I, I was rescued. It was quite spectacular. I was rescued, finally, by an ace fighter pilot from the International Space Border Security Patrol. Um, his name was uh, Jedemiah Ignatius Knight. Um, his, opera his operation name his operation mission name was Fernando. Um, anyway, he, he saved me. He rescued me and he dropped me off at Skylab, which was floating around um, in, the air, in, the, in, the, in the ether at that time, uh, where I was able to recuperate and be deprogrammed and eventually repatriated back to Earth. Um, I, I never saw him again. Uh, I never saw him again, but I do think of him often. And um, I'd like to now sing to you the real story um, of Fernando. I always feel like skating when I hear this.
Can you hear the thrum, Fernando? I remember long ago another starry night like this. Oh, Jedi night, Fernando. You were humming to yourself and softly strumming your pulsar. I could hear the distant sound of radio waves coming from a quasar star. Ooh, closer now, Fernando. Every hour, every minute seemed to last eternally. I was so afraid, Fernando, that a gaping big black hole would come and swallow you and I. And I'm not ashamed to say the night that Skylab fell, it almost made me cry. There was something in the air, the stars were bright, Fernando. They were shining. It's many years since I've seen a lightsaber in your hand. Can you hear the thrum, Fernando? I still recall the fateful night we crossed the asteroid band. Can see it in your eyes how proud you were to fly at warp speed with one hand. 